the owl always takes her sleep during the day. Then after sundown, when the rosy light fades from the sky and the shadows rise slowly through the wood, out she comes ruffling and blinking from the old hollow tree. Now her weird hoo-hoo-hoo-oo-oo echoes through the quiet wood, and she begins her hunt for the bugs and beetles, frogs and mice she likes so well to eat. Now there was a certain old owl who had become very cross and hard to please as she grew older, especially if anything disturbed her daily slumbers. One warm summer afternoon as she dozed away in her den in the old oak tree, a grasshopper nearby began a joyous but very raspy song. Out popped the old owl's head from the opening in the tree that served her both for door and for window. Get away from here, sir, she said to the grasshopper. Have you no manners? You should at least respect my age and leave me to sleep in quiet. But the grasshopper answered saucily that he had as much right to his place in the sun as the owl had to her place in the old oak. Then he struck up a louder and still more rasping tune. The wise old owl knew quite well that it would do no good to argue with the grasshopper, nor with anybody else for that matter. Besides, her eyes were not sharp enough by day to permit her to punish the grasshopper as he deserved. So she laid aside all hard words and spoke very kindly to him. Well, sir, she said, if I must stay awake, I am going to settle right down to enjoy your singing. Now that I think of it, I have a wonderful wine here, sent me from Olympus, of which I am told Apollo drinks before he sings to the high gods. Please come up and taste this delicious drink with me. I know it will make you sing like Apollo himself. The foolish grasshopper was taken in by the owl's flattering words. Up he jumped to the owl's den, but as soon as he was near enough so the old owl could see him clearly, she pounced upon him and ate him up. Flattery is not a proof of true admiration. Do not let flattery throw you off your guard against an enemy. One fine day, two crabs came out from their home to take a stroll on the sand. Child, said the mother, you are walking very ungracefully. You should accustom yourself to walking straight forward without twisting from side to side. Pray, mother, said the young one, do but set the example yourself, and I will follow you. Examples is the best precept. One day a countryman going to the nest of his goose found there an egg all yellow and glittering. When he took it up, it was as heavy as lead and he was going to throw it away, because he thought a trick had been played upon him. But he took it home on second thoughts and soon found to his delight that it was an egg of pure gold. Every morning the same thing occurred and he soon became rich by selling his eggs. As he grew rich, he grew greedy, and thinking to get at once all the gold the goose could give, he killed it and opened it only to find nothing. Greed often overreaches itself. A bear came across a log where a swarm of bees had nested to make their honey. As he snooped around, a single little bee flew out of the log to protect the swarm. Knowing that the bear would eat all the honey, the little bee stung him sharply on the nose and flew back into the log. This flew the bear into an angry rage. He swatted at the log with his big claws, determined to destroy the nest of bees inside. This only alerted the bees, and quick as a wink, the entire swarm of bees flew out of the log and began to sting the bear from head to heel. The bear saved himself by running to and diving into the nearest pond. It is better to bear a single injury in silence than to bring about a thousand by reacting in anger. It was hot summer. A lion went to a pool to drink water. Just then a pig also came there to quench his thirst. Both of them wanted to drink first. They looked at each other with bloodshot eyes and attacked each other with so much anger that soon they started bleeding. Feeling tired, both stopped for a while to be fresh. Suddenly, they heard the screams of vultures. They saw that a large number of vultures were looking at them with longing eyes. In no time, both the beasts understood that the vultures were waiting for one of them to be killed by the other so that they might feed on his dead body. So both of them became friends, quenched their thirst, and went away. Thus, their friendship saved their lives.